Let's start with our presentation on boarding OMS, Configuration Management with Azure Commission. I'm Stan Kalabout. I'm a consultant at Innovative and recently awarded the PowerShell Hero Award. Um, so for the agenda of today, um, we'll first have a brief uh, overview of what PowerShell Desired State Configuration is and um, what it tries to do. Um, then we'll make the link to desired state configuration and how it is used within Azure Automation. Um, and Azure Automation is, as you might know, um, part of uh, OMS. Then um, we'll start importing and creating our own configurations um, to get uh, a sort of look and feel of um, how we can do that with PowerShell and within the portal. And of course, once we have our configurations available, um, it is necessary to onboard our nodes. And um, as stated, uh, we'll onboard some Azure nodes, um, but we'll also look um, in onboarding um, an AWS node um, as um, having a full scope of um, the possibilities. And then we'll um, briefly discuss some advanced configuration management as well. So let's get started with what PowerShell Desired State Configuration is. So as you can see on the slide, um, it looks like PowerShell, um, and it has a keyword configuration. And then we'll just give it a title, and we'll have some curly braces that define our nodes and um, the features um, that we would like to have installed. So um, again, as I said, configurations allow you to define um, via PowerShell syntax the desired state of your environment in a declarative way. And this is um, opposed to um, using PowerShell script. It's basically an imperative way um, of defining um, what you want or how your server, how you want your server to look like. So um, desired state configuration provides a set of PowerShell um, language extensions, because it's not really PowerShell, and resources that can be used to specify how you want your service to be configured. So once you run this configuration, it will actually um, provide um, one or more um, configurations. Um, um, those configurations are actually MOV documents. And MOV stands for Management Object Format. And it's basically a plain text um, file in a format um, developed by Open Standards. So now that we had a brief introduction on how and what a configuration is and what it tries to do, Let's have a look on um, the possibilities of using that PowerShell desired state configuration. So basically, we have um, two modes, a pull mode and a push mode. And the easiest one is the push model. So basically, you will define or create your own configuration. Once you have your configuration, you run it, so you compile it, it creates the mod file, and then we'll just push it to um, one of our services and it's the local configuration store um, that will translate um, those calls and will start building up our survey with the desired um, configuration. And the, two, uh, the second model is actually um, the pool model. So basically, um, we have a client server model. So we'll create again our configurations as stated um, in the authoring phase on the left. And once we have our configuration, um, we actually push it to the pool server. And the pool server actually contains all the data and the modules that are needed, um, the modules containing the desired state uh, configuration resources. And we'll actually start interacting with the servers that are onboarded on that pool server model. And this is basically um, what OMS, um, Azure Automation Desired State Configuration, is all about. And it's actually um, the top of the, um, the drawing that you see. Um, it's Azure Automation Desired State Configuration is a sort of um, platform or a, as a service. Um, no, it's not. Yeah. It's a SaaS application, um, so a pool server in the cloud. So. If we look in how um, it um, desired state configuration and the pool server in within Azure Automation or OMS, as you would like to say, um, is integrated or um, works uh, in the cloud, um, is basically we have our 
different means to import configurations. So we can use the Azure portal, we can use PowerShell, we could also use an, uh, an API or even a C-sharp SDK. Um, but during the demos, we'll look in um, the Azure portal and how we can use PowerShell to actually start importing those configurations. And once we have um, our configurations available, we of course need to compile um, those configurations to produce the necessary mod files. One of the um, important key elements here to note is that the compiled configurations um, within Azure Automation DSP are actually encrypted. So um, once we start talking uh, later on in the presentation about the advanced configuration uh, possibilities, um, this is one of the concepts um, that will come back. Um, so once the mock file has been stored um, on the Azure Automation uh, pool server, we are able to onboard virtual machines. Um, those can be Azure virtual machines, or those can be um, virtual machines um, that are um, located within your enterprise or even any other cloud. Uh, for example, in our demos, we will use an um, uh, AWS node um, to provide um, the look and feel on um, how to onboard um, other machines not hosted within uh, Azure. This brings us, after a brief in introduction on what PowerShell DSC is and what it tries to solve, and how um, it will operate within Azure, um, we'll have a brief look at configuration management itself, and we'll start building our own configuration. So what we'll do is we'll create, um, within our configuration, uh, we'll create a temporary folder We'll uh, use um, an experimental um, DSC resource um, to download the monitoring uh, agent. And once we've downloaded the monitoring agent, we'll install and configure the monitoring agent so we can actually onboard to our OMS workspace. And then um, we'll start, uh, we'll make sure that the service is started as well. So let's dive into our code and open up our show. ISE. So again, as I already stated, one of the keywords, um, I'll zoom in a bit, um, to define configurations is configuration keyword. And then we'll just need to provide a name and our curly braces. Within that configuration, we will use um, <coughs> Sorry, we will use um, DSC resources, um, like for example, as I already stated, we will create a folder. So we need the file resource and we'll create a temp folder. And that again, we'll use curly braces to define what we want and how we want it to look like. So first of all, we want our temporary folder to be present. Of course, we want it to have a destination. So that's destination part. And let's make that a variable. And not a file, but we'll actually override the type to directory. And that's basically it, what you need um, to define or um, a resource and to make sure that it will actually start uh, or exit. Another key element is apart from um, uh, within PowerShell where you have auto loading of your modules. This is the same for configurations, but once we compile um, specific, sorry, specifically because um, of versioning, um, we'll um, import our DSC resource. And uh, the file resource um, is located in a module called PS Desired State Configuration. So now we can continue with defining our second resource. And that is actually a resource and the experimental resource um, located in the experimental desired a configuration um, module. 
but experimental resources are nowadays specified with an action from. So whatever you search on um, the PowerShell gallery, powershellgallery.com, if I'm not mistaken, um, you can download all um, PowerShell modules or even DSP resources um, to your local system so you can start altering um, your configuration. So um, we'll also have a management agent URI and again the curly braces. And um, for the extra mode file, um, normally you also get um, IntelliSense um, when you press the control space bar. So um, here you see that we need a URI. Uh, we can also specify a destination, uh, even the user agent, headers, et cetera, if needed. And one very important one is match source. Um, the match source provides us with the capability um, to actually, once a file is downloaded, and every time we run or rerun a configuration, um, to actually skip it once it is downloaded. So if we set the match source to true, it will download the file every time just to make sure that we have the latest version. But as uh, once we have our OMS um, or our server onboarded in OMS, um, we actually do not care anymore if the sources are available. So first off, let us specify a URI or destination path. For the moment, I'm just um, providing blank um, strings. Um, uh, I already prepared something, um, but I want to make sure that or go through on how we can easily start building our um, own configuration. And um, we had our match source. This false because we do not want to download every time. And of course, another key concept uh, within configuration um, is the depends on property. And basically the, in, within the depends on property, we can specify any dependent resources. So um, the extra remote file resource will only execute once the file resource temp folder has been executed successfully. So we'll just need to provide um, within square brackets our resource name, so that is file and then the name temp folder. Note that um, the depends on is an array. So um, if we have multiple dependencies, we can of course specify multiple depends on um, <clears throat> element. So um, let me now skip to uh, an already complete uh, configuration. So as you can see here, um, we have the same configuration with the name OMS onboarding. Um, because we have multiple OMS um, workspaces or could have multiple OMS workspaces, um, I provided a, a parameter section where I provide the workspace ID and the workspace key. Um, this provides us the capabilities of having some dynamically, um, some dynamic capabilities once we start compiling um, our resources. Um, again, I have two statements to import our DSC resources, so the PS desired state configuration and XPS desired state configuration. As um, the new concept here is that I specified a node. The node here is MMA. Um, Normally, you would uh, spec specify the name of the server, or even if you work with configuration data, you could abstract the server name, and the configuration data will provide um, input for those server names. But with um, Azure Automation Desired State Configuration, um, the node names aren't exactly um, needed anymore or don't need to be uh, matching anymore one-to-one uh, -one with server name um, as we can start using um, node configurations for remote or targeting multiple servers. So again, as you see, uh, we have our file resource. We want it to be present. And we have a remote file. And here I already have um, the link to our exe pre-filled. Um, we have a PowerShell PS user agent defined and it depends on the temp fold. 
And then, of course, um, we want to install our package. So here again, I'm using an experimental um, X package resource, which is available in the XPS desired state configuration module. Um, and I provide a silent installer, so dash two dash d double column dot 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 exe and so on, which actually accepts a workspace ID and a workspace D, which are provided using C sharp um, replacement um, for readability. So um, for a package, we have a path. We want it to be present, so installed, we give it a name. So this name is um, exactly the same name as it will appear in um, the programs, install program. We have our product ID, which is the unique identifier, the arguments, so our silence um, install. And again, it depends on another resource. So here it depends on the extra remote file resource. And then once we have it installed, uh, we want the service to be up and running. And again, we do not want the service or want desired state configuration to try to start a service that doesn't exist already. So we have a dependency on our X package um, agent. So now that we have created um, our configuration, it's time to go to our portal. And um, of course, we need, once we have a portal, desired state configuration needs to be um, within an automation account. So when you want to create an automation account, you just click New, Management. You select Automation. You provide a name. You put it in a subscription. You can put it in a resource group, or you need to put it in a resource group. You can select an existing one, or you can create a new. A location it also needs to be present, and then you just need to click Create. But I already provided or created an automation account uh, available to us. So let's go in our OMS onboarding automation account. And as you can see, I already pre-filled up some um, nodes and configurations. So um, for example, um, what we'll discuss today is DSC configurations or node configurations, so the compiled configurations linked to our nodes. So first off, let's go to DSC configuration and add a configuration. So I can just click the add button and I'll get prompted by, uh, and let me just browse to our scripts folder and um, we have our um, OMS onboarding configuration. And it detected our OMS onboarding configuration present in our file that we just authored. I just need to click OK. And it will start importing um, our configuration. <coughs> just hit refresh. Didn't delete anything, so let me quickly delete the existing ones. Uh, let's quickly go through that again. Click OK. It's important the configuration, and as you can see, it just imported the configuration successfully with the status of public. So if we go into the details, um, you can also see um, the configuration source. And it will actually provide us with the same look and feel without um, the highlighting uh, what I just showed you. And of course, we can export it. And we can also, the next step is actually compiling the resource. And um, here available, we have um, as a node configuration onboarding.amma. And that is actually a um, compiled configuration. So now that we um, imported it using the portal, um, you can also import configuration using PowerShell. So let's have a quick look on how to do that. Um, 
So for example, here we have an automation account. So we need to gather um, the information of our automation account because we need to put, know where to put our DSD configuration. So let me quickly get that automation account. Okay. Changing network didn't. Good. So let me quickly re-authenticate. So now that I'm authenticated, I should be able to get my automation account details. So as you can see, um, we have our automation account to MS onboarding, as I showed you in the portal, uh, within the resource group name TechNet 2016. And then um, I just need to import um, my configuration. And let me browse to my folder to see users. GitHub Unity um, will have our six folders. So after the presentation, um, all the uh, scripts and flights will be made available um, on channel nine and also um, on my GitHub account. So as a source path, um, it will be as onboarding and I will import that CSD configuration. So using the dash published, it will be in a published state with, for the moment, um, uh, importing DSC resources will always be in a published state, but maybe in the future, um, this will change. And um, I will also specify um, the course uh, parameter as I already imported the configuration using the, uh, in the portal. So I want to uh, override that. So let me just quickly execute that. Um, yeah, be better. No. Typos, something that I need to look out for. And I'm running into an error message which shouldn't happen. My resource group name is Net sixteen. I have an automation account for this reporting. The source path is Wanted to be published and source. I don't even know. Quickly save it as one as onboarding, um, so it has the same name as our configuration. And let me try to rerun that again. Otherwise, so let us just skip that. Um, so basically, um, we have import Azure RM automation DSC configuration that will import the configuration. And once it is uh, imported, uh, we can actually start compiling it. We can compile from um, the portal, as you could see, and hit the compile button. But we can also use PowerShell um, Azure um, module to actually uh, compile that uh, configuration. And let me try to specify. 
Let's see what happened. Don't really know what happened. The argument. I'm missing something. I can't seem to see what it is. Because normally, um, again, as with any commandlet, we have a resource group name, an automation account name that we need to specify. Of course, we need to specify the configuration name, so what configuration we want to compile. And if the configuration needs some parameters, we'll provide those parameters. And parameters are passed in using a hash table. So um, basically, we have our workspace ID and our workspace key as defined within our configuration, string workspace ID and string workspace key. So this provides us with the dynamic behavior that we want uh, of our configuration so we can compile it once for every OMS workspace that we have available. So um, as a demo field, let me quickly go back to um, our portal. Go back to our GSP configuration. Um, let me delete those as well. Go back to our um, configuration. You'll have uh, OMS onboarding, and then we can hit the compile key, uh, button. So, and as you can see, we had specified two parameters a workspace ID and a workspace key. And let me uh, quickly grab those uh, from. What I intended to do using PowerShell with a quick copy and paste. So I have my workspace ID and workspace key. Hit the OK button. And as you can see, we have submitted um, a compilation request and now it is queued for compilation. And once um, that compilation job has finished, uh, we'll have an additional node configuration available. So um, now that we saw um, how to uh, import configurations using um, the portal and uh, not so um, lucky PowerShell execution and also to compile those, let's have a look at um, onboarding um, resources. So. Um, you can onboard uh, both Azure V1 and V2 VMs. So um, you can onboard um, Azure V2 VMs using um, the Azure using Azure Automation Desired State Configuration click through. And if you want to onboard Azure V1, so the mainly reference as the classic uh, virtual machines. Um, you will need to browse to the VM and use the desired state configuration extension um, to onboard your VM. And then, of course, we also have the option to onboard on-premise servers. So our on-premise service can be uh, servers located within your own data center or servers located within any other cloud. For example, AWS or OpenStack or whatever. So let's have a brief look at um, how we can start uh, importing those nodes. So again, um, we'll go to our automation account. Click on the DSC nodes tab. And we'll click on add Azure VM. So here um, we have another pane um, where we can select the virtual machines that we want to onboard. So let me click that. And then um, we'll have an overview of all the virtual machines currently available within my subscription. And as the warning states, um, Azure Linux VMs are not supported using uh, the GUI and neither um, are the Azure Classic VMs. So um, 
you need to pay attention to um, what um, you can select or want to select. So um, I have here my member 01 server. Let me click OK. And of course, you can uh, multi-select as well. And then we have a second tab um, where we can configure registration data. And this is actually um, all the options um, that you get when you want to configure um, the local configuration management of um, your server that you want to onboard. The local configuration manager actually takes care of um, how the server will um, react on a DSP configuration that is, um, has been sent to that server. So for example, how many times will my server check if a new configuration is available? Um, what is the behavior um, of um, once a configuration is detected? Will I apply and monitor? Um, will I only apply or will I apply and try to auto-correct if we, uh, the configuration has been deviated from after applying? Also, we have some options um, to reboot if needed. So can the server reboot if a reboot is needed? And what is the behavior after a reboot? And um, given the fact that uh, we want to send a configuration to our uh, server, we can also directly specify the configuration name. So it actually starts um, accepting or triggering a configuration right away. But for the moment, we'll just look into onboarding our server. So we'll just leave the defaults and click OK. Once I hit the Create button, you will see that um, oh, it filled. And why did it fill? I think I just selected the wrong member one. Server. So let me quickly go through that again. Add Azure VM, select virtual machines, and just to make sure um, I select at least the correct one. Let me just quickly select both of them. Okay. Create. So again, one will fail, and um, normally the other one um, be able to register. Um, as you can see, um, the, within the annotation, that it is actually using the desired state VM um, extension to onboard or um, server. So if we go back to our server, member zero one, and we'll hit the extension tab. You will see that um, it will uh, it used or um, added the PowerShell Desired State Configuration extension, uh, which is currently um, still in another available state, to onboard that VM. Um, so it's basically the mechanisms that we would use to um, deploy servers using ORM templates or PowerShell um, that is actually um, also used behind the scenes to onboard that VM. Yeah. So, in the meantime, let's, um, it will take a while uh, before the extension is installed, and it will also make sure that um, the correct PowerShell version is installed, and then it will actually apply the configuration, um, a configuration applied to the local configuration management. And once that is installed, um, it will actually show up here, and we'll actually have three DSC nodes available. So now that we saw the PowerShell um, and let's go to our onboarding of uh, <clears throat> an Azure VM, in, which is actually quite simple. And um, if, for example, uh, you want to now get up a little bit, and it has something with Azure or um, an ESD in it, uh, 
I mean, star, you have all um, possible um, Azure automation DSD commandlets available. And of course, we want to look into um, onboarding an Azure VM, uh, V2 VM using PowerShell. So if we look into um, the the PowerShell commandlets, um, and uh, we should have a commandlet called Acer Azure RM Automation DSP node. And if we start uh, using that, uh, you see that we can provide an Azure uh, VM name, a node configuration, the mode, etc. So basically, everything that we've um, uh, go, uh, seen in the portal, we can use uh, within a PowerShell command to actually have the same uh, experience. So um, now that we've onboarded um, our uh, first VM, and I will see that um, it is still busy installing the DST extension, and yes, that could take a while. Um, we could actually have a look at some advanced configuration manager. So, um, the first um, item on the advanced um, topic um, is uh, what I wanted to discuss is um, the behavior of credential within PowerShell desired state configuration. So, by default, PowerShell desired state configuration does not allow you um, to use passwords because once a password um, is put um, into a configuration and it is compiled, everything behind um, that, is, um, as I stated, it's a MOF file. So the MOF file is just a plain text file. So that means that your password would just be there in the text. So it is advised to use certificates um, to actually um, encrypt your um, password at compilation time. And then on your um, node where you want to send your configuration to, you will need that certificate again um, to um, decrypt the password um, once the configuration will be applied. Now, um, as I already mentioned in um, one of the, when we had a look at um, how Azure Automation implemented a full service, um, one of the things that I mentioned was that um, the configuration, once it has been compiled will automatically be encrypted. So um, we can start using actually clear text passwords as our configuration is stored securely on our um, Azure our automation full server. And once the um, server is onboarded, um, a certificate will be generated and it will be stored on our server as well. So um, once the MOF file or the configuration is sent through um, or onboarded uh, server, um, when the communication is over um, SSL, so we're quite secure there as well, um, it will also be stored securely on the server and only decompiled at, um, when compile um, will be decompiled when applying the configuration. And then, of course, we also have something uh, for domain users. So again, by default, um, the use of domain user account is not allowed by desired state configuration, and you need to explicitly allow that. So if we have a quick look at how a configuration um, using credential support is used, um, we'll see that um, Again, we have a configuration, we give it a name, in this case, credential support, and we'll accept a parameter of type PS credential. Then um, I will be using um, a PowerShell um, desired state uh, resource called X registry located in PS, XPS desired state configuration module. And we'll just create a registry value um, saying that DSC rocks with a value um, as a value data and with the name of OMS in um, HD local machine software OMS onboarding. And for the purpose of this demo, um, I've added sorry, I've added um, 
the corporate EPSD you see run as credential. And this is a WMF5 feature um, or addition to um, PSD, um, which actually allows you to um, execute certain resources under um, non-system credential. So here um, I will be prompted for a credential and at, um, apply, when applying the configuration, this resource will be executed using our specified credential. So um, once we have that um, configuration defined, we also um, need to import it. And one of the main aspects when um, importing that configuration is of course, we need to specify or um, saying that we allow clear text password and domain users. So let me just import that configuration data. Let me also grab our automation account information and let's have a look at our configuration data. So as you can see, our configuration data has an all notes um, property and within that node I say for every node name uh, that hello O and a registry I want to be as desired state configuration allow plain text password properties that to true and again we can specify the same so if we have a look at our uh, credential for data uh, contents which is basically a hash table we could also allow uh, the use of domain user um, credentials to set that OMS registry. So if we go back, um, we have again um, some configuration parameters and we need to import our configuration. And let's hope this one works. No, and I do not understand why as Doesn't really have a script property. I must say that my demos aren't going as I expected them or tested them. So in any case, um, that's. Um, we have our um, configuration that we need to um, import. And um, once that we um, imported that configuration, we also need to apply that and update it again. We need a resource group name, an automation account name. We specify our configuration name, the data. So the data that specifies that we allow clear text passwords in our MOF file, but our MOF file is encrypted anyway, so we do not actually care or make a big deal out of it. And then um, we specify our credentials. And as you see here, um, I just specify a name. It's not really a credential object that I specify. And this is one of the nice um, features of um, Azure Desired State configuration as well, is that um, you do not need to specify a PS credential object. You just can specify the name of an um, Azure Automation credential asset. So in this case, I have a credential asset with the name of local admin, and it's the Azure Automation pool server that will actually translate or check um, if um, I have an asset as local admin create. Another possibility um, is instead of using um, a parameter where I specify um, just the name of the credential asset is that I can um, use um, Azure Automation um, module uh, commandlet within the Azure Automation module to go grab that credential with name local admin, store it in um, a credential uh, object and use that actually to um, specify my or um, specify a value for my PSDSD credential. 
So as I had a bad experience um, executing uh, commands um, during uh, my demos, I will just walk through them and then we'll look um, into our portal as well on how we can uh, actually import um, think credentials, support uh, configuration and compile that using the port. So once we have um, or uh, compiled or um, configuration, we will just need to wait until compilation is done. And then um, we could go grab the details of that configuration. Let me just go to the portal and walk you through importing uh, the configuration. Again, DSC configurations, as we already did before, add a configuration. And now this time, we'll select our credential support configuration. It is correctly detected. It will be imported. We have it available. We can click on it. And then we hit the compile button. And then you can see um, we have a credential object that is uh, we're prompted for. Um, and it is of type management of automation of this credential. And now I could easily specify local admin, which is a credential asset already available um, within my uh, Azure Automation account. And as you can see, the compilation job is now queued uh, for processing. So if we have a quick look at our assets, credentials, you see that here I have a local admin um, credential object available. And during compile time, um, the Azure Automation tool will go check that credential for um, to actually make that translation. So another um, thing that I want to talk about is we just had our demo is Azure Automation Desired State Configuration and Linux support. So um, Desired State Configuration um, is also possible um, to use with Linux and Azure Automation also fully supports it. So, but there are some prerequisites. So first off, you need to download and install OMI. Then you need to install the DSC Linux agent. And then you need to import uh, import the NX PowerShell DSP resource um, modules available on PowerShell uh, Gallery. And once you have those resources available, you can create configuration specific um, for uh, managing your Linux host. And then, uh, of course, you can start using them uh, again as any other um, resource. But um, before we close off, I also promised to onboard an um, AWS um, instance. And um, I also have my AWS portal open. And as you can see here, we have um, our server running. And the only thing that I did is that um, I installed uh, PowerShell v5 on that server. And I um, allowed um, communication on um, any subnet uh, for remoting. So because I'm not in the same subnet as my uh, AWS server, I needed to explicitly um, change my firewall. And then, of course, my uh, PowerShell remoting ports are um, open or allowed as well. So let me go back to PowerShell ISD and click on onboard AWS. So again, um, I specify the IP address uh, of my AWS uh, computer. And um, as neither of uh, machine is domain joint, I also added that IP address to my trust to allow that remote PowerShell remote computer. So um, now um, that I want to onboard my AWS machine or any other on-prem VM, um, I actually need to configure um, the local configuration manager. And there's actually a pretty easy way to do that. There's a complicated way or um, and an easy way. So let's first discuss um, the easy way. So again, um, I need to specify account name, resource group name, or what computer I want um, a configuration to be compiled and where I want to um, actually 
store that. So let me execute it as well. And we'll just go grab that configuration. So that commandlet actually creates, go grabs um, the a MOF file um, with the specified um, computer name within out folder X. And in this case, the default is ESC meta config. So if we open up um, for MOF file, you see that it has uh, the IP address in the name .meta .mof. And the dot meta is important as um, it will uh, contain metadata to contain uh, to configure actually our local configuration management. But in the end, it's just a typical MOF file. Um, and as you can see, uh, we have all the information here available um, to actually register our um, AWS machine in our um, Azure Automation Desire configuration account. So once we have that, um, I just need to provide my computer name and credentials, and then we'll build up a session to our AWS hosts. Um, I have an access denied. So My credential is not okay. Let's try. Session new PS session. Computer name is AWS computer name and our credential. So prompt for it. And I know what I'm missing here. So let me quickly connect to my AWS machine and grab that. Computer name. Because I can just specify, um, as you can see, it's in EC2. Um, instance, and here, I just need my computer name. And let's quickly go back to our PowerShell ID. Potential. Computer name administrator password, and then we should be able to get a session. Now that we have our session established, um, we need, of course, to copy our DSC uh, configuration. Uh, or the MOF file that has been generated. So we use something um, to copy the item to a session. So we'll just need to provide our uh, session and a destination and we'll put it in the C drive, the root of the C drive. And normally, um, if we then log on to our in. We should be able to see. Nope, because I forgot to specify the recurse parameter. An item with the same name already exists, but it doesn't. And 
of course, this will tell me that I connected to the wrong machine. And again, my policy, the, the demos are not quite worked out as they were expected to be. And there, for example, we have our um, DSC meta config with uh, our mock file. And then basically, um, we could do it with PowerShell remoting, or we could just use uh, PowerShell Chrome. And then we could actually set our DSP local configuration manager to the pods DSC meta configs. And then it will start applying the configuration. And if we go back to our portal, we should be able to have a brand new. So in the meantime, our member one server has been joined and is compliant, but hasn't yet um, have um, a configuration available. Normally, if we uh, there we go. I missed it. Uh, we have our AWS server which has been recently joined um, a minute ago um, as being compliant. So as you can see, um, we now have onboarded um, an AWS uh, machine or any on-prem machine. We have onboarded some Azure um, VMs. We imported those configurations and compiled a couple of configurations where we can actually start um, sending those to or assigning nodes to a certain configuration. For example, here, we could easily, using the GUI or with PowerShell, um, assign a configuration to a certain node. And if we would go back to our node, we could update our DSC configuration, and it will actually start running and applying uh, or creating the folder. And uh, so here you see that it already created the temp folder and it is downloading our um, MMA setup. So next up, it will uh, run the silent installer and start onboarding our AWS machine. But I also see that uh, we're running out of time. Um, so I'll just pop up the last slide. Um, with, which contains a couple of links on how to get started with this state configuration on MGA. Um, it also contains a link to the Azure Automation Configuration Management documentation. And I also want to refer to an excellent series on desired state configuration uh, within Azure Automation by my colleague uh, Ben Galen, and uh, that is available on Channel 9 as well. So um, I will thank you very much uh, for attending this session. And again, apologies for um, a couple of demos that didn't go as expected. Thank you.